Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be looking at how to use a SAS URL to upload a file to Azure Blob Storage. Today I'm going to be continuing the series on my serverless blog project and today I'm going to be looking at some APIs related to binary data that is embedded inside of posts, so things such as images. And we've seen APIs already, we've looked at the data APIs for things like pages and posts and we've looked at some of the APIs related to content and we're going to be looking at the admin site and how it interacts with these APIs but ultimately where this is going to end up is on the pages and posts this would be on the published site that we are actually going to be building through this serverless blog in a previous video we looked at this algorithm about how things get from pieces of a template into a page or a post and part of that process was merging content and data into the content of a given page or post and then merging that content in the page or post with its template to produce that page and post that gets written out to the published site. Today we're going to be looking at a portion of that content that gets incorporated into pages and posts. To get a blob onto Azure Blob Storage, the first thing you'll need is a SAS URL to upload that to. Now a SAS URL is a combination of URL and SAS tokens. A SAS token stands for Shared Access Signature. A Shared Access Signature contains both the permissions available to a post or a container, and then it will also have the time box for how long that token is valid for and then it will have a signature that is generated from the properties of that token and one of the keys that is provided to that particular blob storage account and with that token the requests can be validated so you can take that shared access token and then do an http post or put to that by way of uh, just a standard upload with a, within a browser or something like Postman and you can actually upload files or content to that given endpoint. And once that is actually uploaded then you can access that by way of a URL inside of a post that is a post in my blog that is being served up by the static website that we've configured our blob storage account for. I want to walk you through the code that is being used to generate the SAS token for my given application. It's actually very simple. So what I did is I created another function inside of my function app here and I already have the functions for pages and posts and this one is just a function to serve up URLs for uploading data into my blob storage account. So it basically has a uh, put in a post that both call the same method, and that's this generate SAS URL method right here. And the SAS, generate SAS URL method is very simple. It basically creates a shared access policy and then gets a token for that and then gets the URL for that. So the way this works is you basically create a date range, which is right here, and I'm going minus five minutes from the current time and then plus 60 minutes from the current time, so roughly an hour window for how long this will be valid for and then I'm set, setting the permissions right here to write permissions now um, if I unless I pass don't pass in the permissions right there and with this I can then call a shared access policy that looks like this to create this object and it's based on the permissions object uh, that I hear permissions value the start and the end date and then this is going to call out to the actual APIs that are provided to Node.js by get shared access signature and this passes in the, the container that I'm going to be publishing this into, the path which is really just the name and then a folder which is embedded in that, that dollar web folder and then the shared access policy and then that will generate the SAS token and then sign that token. And then I can take that same token and turn around and get a URL for it. And the URL is what actually gets returned. So this URL gets passed back up to my um, switch case here. And then that gets returned back to whatever called this endpoint or whatever called this API. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to come down here to Postman and I'm going to call out to my API. So right here, I have 
uh, my API defined um, as slash API slash media, and that's the base URL for it. And to call this, I'm going to be calling it by way of a JSON post. And the only parameter I need in my body for this is the name of the file that I want to generate the SAS token and SAS URL for. And this is a file that I have on my hard drive. So if I come down here, I can come down here to my downloads folder and I can open up this file right here. It's just this mentoring uh, JPEG that I used in a blog post not too long ago. If I go to rename and grab this guy and then go back over here to Postman, I can populate this. But since I already did that, I can just paste it in there over this. And then I'm going to change the file name uh, just so that it shows up as a new file inside of my blob storage when I actually upload this. Um, so I have 1921 instead of 1920, and I'm going to hit send, and that's going to generate a URL. Now this URL is is currently not being used for anything. It's just the endpoint that I'm going to be using for an HTTP put. So I'm going to go ahead and click this, and what Postman will do is pre-populate most of the fields for me uh, for my query parameters, which are already embedded in the URL. Now I need to change the method here to put, and I need to provide a header that tells Blob Storage what kind of blob I'm going to be uploading to this. So to get the value for this, I'm going to go borrow it from one of these I've already done over here, and I'm going to call it x-ms-blob type, and then I'm going to put in block blob. And this tells it what kind of blob this is. It can be a block blob, a page blob, or a pen blob. And we've talked about all of those at some point uh, over the past few videos. Now, once I have that parameter set in the header, the only thing I need to do now is come over here and select a file. Now I'm going to select that file that I was going to upload, but it's going to change the file name in blob storage because that's what I'm going to be uploading it to right here instead of this particular file name that I have here on my local folder. And if I click this, it's going to give me a 200, uh, error, uh, 200 status code for this. That's not an error. And that means that I successfully created this blob on blob storage. So to show you what this looks like, I'm going to come over here to Azure Storage Explorer. And this is my current list of files I have in there. I'm going to refresh it. And I have this new one here that I just uploaded at 3.03 p.m. I'm going to go ahead and open this guy up. And we should be able to see that file that I uploaded. So that's how it looks within the context of using something like Postman, which is just an HTTP client. Now, to show you what this looks like inside of my application, I'm going to load my application up and I'm going to go through the application and show you where I'm actually using this and how I've got it integrated into my app. I'm here inside the index.html for my application for the admin site. Now, I'm not going to go through all the code here, but I do want to look at the relevant part. And what I'm doing here is I have a HTML editor, a rich text, text editor in HTML called TinyMCE, which is one of the many ones out there. It's one of my preferred ones to use. And what I've done is I configured one of its hooks. It's called an image upload handler to have a custom handler to allow me to upload binary data through the actual UI for TinyMCE. And what this hook does is anytime I click on insert or edit an image that will give me the option to upload an image. And this custom handler allows me to call out the custom code that is on the server side. So in this one, what I'm doing is I'm calling my endpoint here, media endpoint, and that's what's getting my actual SAS URL, with, which has my URL and my uh, SAS token, which we saw in Postman. And that's what gets populated right here in this you upload URL. And then down here, I'm doing a custom uh, HTTP request object against that upload URL that was generated by that service that I called in my Azure function. And it configures the HTTP request. And then here's where it's setting that header that I set, that x-ms uh, blob type to block blob. And then once it has all of the configuration set, it actually uploads the data right here to that particular uh, endpoint on Azure Blob Storage. And then once that comes back successfully, it will then generate a URL for that based on 
um, the actual file name that I uploaded and then the base URL for the published site and then the media folder which it's getting uploaded into. So uh, on Azure Blob Storage that is dollar web slash media slash and then the blob name here. And with that in mind, I can go ahead and sh show you what this looks like if I run it. So I'm going to come down here to my web admin and launch this guy in Chrome. And here is the uh, homepage for this. It's just coming to post. And I have here four blog posts. I'm going to come over here into this demo post here, demo post four, and edit this guy. And I've already got in this uh, post a image that's embedded here and this one I previously uploaded but if I wanted to upload a new image just come down here to the bottom and put my cursor down there I'm gonna come down here and click insert edit image I'm gonna call upload and I'm gonna browse for my image and then I'm going to find let's say let's look let's upload this one and then I'm gonna set the size of it to 400 and hit save and now that image is embedded in my post if I come over here and save post I've saved that now back to Azure file storage, Azure blob storage, and then I've saved the content of this post. So if I come over here and I load a new post, say this first post, which has just test one, two, three, then I come back over here and edit this post and come down to the bottom, you can see that my image is still there. And if I come back over here to Azure blob storage, explore, uh, I should be, it's already uploaded, it was already there, I just overwrote it at 305 p.m. So you can see here how I can use blob storage integrated with my application, but I'm using some very uh, simple to use APIs that are provided by way of Azure blob storage and then also the ones that are provided through the SDK inside of my Azure function. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.